Hello, Cecilia here. I'm assuming the audio is fine, but if not, just let me know in chat. I uh, decided to do an unplanned stream tonight because I was working on a project earlier and um, ended up just kind of coming up with something working with the GitHub API and decided to come on and kind of demo what I what I came up with and how it works and maybe do some coding of it to show how I got where I got. So I let me get some stuff pulled up here. So this is similar to a video that I posted before. I uh, didn't live stream it, but it was on uh, YouTube. And I can post a link for that in the chat. But essentially, I have this um, API tools uh, repository that I have used before to kind of create a, a GitHub image. Oops, sorry about that. I was just trying to copy the... Uh, link address here. Okay, so this is for one that I've done before, but essentially it's using Node to connect with the GitHub API in order to kind of do some productivity as if you're using GitHub for your releases, for your projects. So last time it was a, a tool to create issues uh, using JSON. So in this example, I had a kind of a collection of different images that I use for the Mernstack app, and that's the app that I normally am streaming on here. Um, but it has some kind of co commonly used uh, issues, and then I also included the labels, and that will automatically create those issues in GitHub without having to use the user interface. So this is kind of in that same vein. I created a new script today that we'll be working on, and what it does is it's, it's helpful for a couple different things, but for when you're having a release that's planned, and you're not using continuous deployment or continuous integration, but rather doing point releases, and you are you write release notes, and you want to essentially be able to see what's been committed since a certain date, you know, for example, for since the last release, in order to be able to write your release notes, really like figure out what's going out with this release, make sure that there's not anything that was missed in your project management uh, workflow. So if something was pushed out as a hot fix that didn't get, you know, done correctly with the ticketing system, uh, this would catch anything like that prior to a release. So I'm going to take a look at the code first. And I'm doing this in the same repo as the other API tool, so you can see the create issues from JSON here. That's the one that I had previously worked with, uh, just because they're related and they also use the same .env. Since I use .env to store my API, the GitHub API token, uh, so, this is the code that we're taking a look at here today. So, again, I'm using node fetch package in order to make a fetch to the GitHub API, uh, similar to how I did with the create issues from JSON, except this time I'm doing a get request instead of a post. And I'm sending the authorization in my header. And essentially what this is doing is, if we take a look at Postman, uh, for those of you that have you used Postman? If not, I definitely recommend it because it gets gets you comfortable with making API calls. But this is essentially what the what the call looks looks like. It's going to the repo slash user slash repo slash commits endpoint essentially. And what we're doing here is uh, SHA refers to a a branch, um, an SHA for. <laughs> Uh, for an actual specific branch that you want to call the commits on. In this case, it's it's the you know, master branch, but in your workplace, it probably would be something, because I'm using my personal repo, it would be a develop branch. Um, and then what we're deciding here in these parameters is per page, uh, auto, so GitHub will only, API will only return 30 results unless you do this, unless you reset the per page. Um, I did it to 100. And then since, and here you're putting the date of as how far back you'd like to pull. So for example, if this was, you know, you would put the date of your last release, uh, for example, in order to get everything that's new. So what that looks like if we were to do, you know, to make this call is essentially it sends back this body in JSON and it has each commit, it has the branch that it was made to, the node ID, the author, the committer, the message. and you know, uh, what you, you could do it if you wanted to, you could just essentially make the request in Postman, copy this and edit it how you like. So the purpose of doing that with this tool is that we're gonna do something with that data once it comes back to make it more useful just for, uh, for specifically for release notes. But obviously this could be 
apply it in very different ways. So again, we're, like I said, we're using node fetch. Uh, we're using FS to write a file and then, which is the built-in node file system. And then we're also using .env in order to store the API token. So I'm going to close this out here. So what we're doing in this first section is we're essentially just creating some variables to contain the data that's going to be in our request. So in this case, I'm using some information like a user and repo I'm fine with having here in the code because it's not necessarily sensitive as well as start date. So that can be, you know, those can be updated depending on what you're using this tool for. If you want to get really fancy, you could also run it as a, you know, as a command line tool where you're accepting parameters and then having and then passing those through. So for example, if you had, um, you know, node and then the start file, and then you put the username, the repo and the start date afterwards, or if you had it just where you, you could accept a start date as a node parameter, you could use that instead of uh, outlining what the variables are right here in the file. So after that, you know, I create a, a empty array to store the commit messages. So what's happening is I don't necessarily need all of the information that comes back, right? So if, again, if we look at Postman, you can see that it has quite a bit of information, uh, some payload information that we don't necessarily need uh, in order to just get an idea of what's changed for release notes purposes. So I'm gonna be saving the information that I do want to this commit messages array. So we have our requir package requirements, we have our variables um, defined, and now we're gonna actually be making the fetch call. So because the fetch call is, is, you know, is asynchronous, we're gonna be wrapping it all kind of with this dot then to handle the promise of the fetch, but we're fetching to the URL, and the URL is, like I said, the endpoint is api.github.com slash repos, the username, the repo commits, and then the parameters that we're passing through are the branch SHA, which I've saved as a um, dot in the dot env file, and then per page is 100 to increase the limit of the results, and then since, and this is the start date that we've applied right here. And just to show you again in Postman, when you're making the request, you can use the params tab and add these in here, and then it'll automatically feed it into the URL. So that's kind of a nice feature of, of using a tool like Postman. But uh, if you wanted to use the tool to build out the URL for your project and then copy and paste that in, guess what? That's what I did too. <laughs> and then I just put the variables in. And then so we're doing a get method and then you do have to specify the headers because uh, GitHub requires the authorization token for each request. So in this case, we're sending the content type and actually this is not needed because we're not actually doing a post anymore, but I left it in there because I copied it over from this one. But <laughs> Anyway, so the authorization, so I guess we can go, um, is going to be, again, the API authorization token that you get from GitHub that you can make in your developer settings. So once that promise returns with the results, uh, we're turning them into JSON. And then with that JSON, what we're going to do is for each commit in, the, in this body, you know, again, for each commit that in, in this array, and so I'm just using a simple for each, um, we're going to be taking each commit and we're going to push the message and the date. And so I know it looks kind of funny here, commit dot commit dot message. But what that is, is so, okay. So the JSON response is the entire object. That's what's coming back. That's this whole body of the object that comes back. Now that object is an array. So for each object, array item within that giant JSON object, each of those represents a commit. So what I've done here is I've labeled commit as, as the each in this for each. So for each of those commits in that array, we're taking, we're, we're pushing to our commit messages array here, an instance. And what that instance is, is it's an object with a message and a date. And this commit here refers to the item. So for each commit, we're taking the commit dot commit dot message. And what that refers to is back here in the object. So if you take a look at what we're getting back, for each commit, there is a parameter here. So you have the author, then you have the committer, but each of this is underneath um, a commit object here. So this array here, you have, this is the commit, 
dot commit dot message is what that's going to pull. So you have to take a look at what the response is in order to break out um, like what information you actually want. And so we're also going to take the commit dot author dot date. So that's where that comes from uh, in the code here as well. So commit dot commit dot author dot date. Um, and so then we're going to write a file. Essentially, we're going to create just a commits.json file. Um, the, and that's going to just kind of log to the console if the file's been saved. And then for just to kind of demonstration purposes, we're also going to be logging the commit messages array and then also how many entries there are in that array length. So let's, uh, let's take out, let's run this in node. So let me bring this over. I don't know why that's so big on that screen. So let's make it a little, I guess I could do it in the terminal, but I'd like to, I'd like to use git bash to just have it. Okay, so we're in the uh, repository right now in tools, and we can say this is pull commit since release.js. So we're just going to do node and then, you know, pull commits dot release since JS and see what happens. Okay, great. So we got um, the console log, and this is going to be the new array. And as you can see, it just has the message and the date for each commit. So it didn't return all this, all of this, it just returned the date and the message for each one. And then I also had it, like I said, log the length, so 34. So there's 34 commits since the date um, of 5.6 for this repo, and the file has been saved. So if we go over to our folder, uh, like I said, it looks like <clears throat> using the fs.writes, it was a dot slash commits is the file that it was writing to. It was writing the commit message, but stringified. Otherwise, it's just going to get object, object. And then if it throws an error, it will throw an error there. So we can see over here, we have a new file, commits.json. And here we have the content. So it's essentially all of our dates and our messages in a JSON file. And then this can be used in any kind of workflow way. So you could forward this on to uh, marketing. Or um, for me, what I would do is essentially take this data and mark the ones that are important and then get them, you know, to, well, in this case, it would be myself, but, you know, whoever's going to be writing the documentation of the release and also comparing it to the whatever internal project management system that we have. So if I run this test and I see that we have 34 commits since the last release and I go into our project management system and I see that we only have 30 tickets that are being marked for this release. Well, then something, you know, is either overlapping or missing and we need to take a look at that and see where that, where that is. So, um, so yeah, so that's kind of the demo of how it works. Um, I'm happy to do another example or code it from scratch if anyone has any questions, um, but I will be saving this video as well and keeping it up in order for people to see. But again, um, and then the repo is also, uh, it's under the same API tools that I have the last one on there as well. So the uh, pull commit since release is here along with create issues from JSON.